Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dr. Downey and today we're going to talk about the pill and we're going to look into whether or not the pill has any benefits in terms of athletics. More specifically, we're going to look and see whether or not it has anabolic abilities. Furthermore, we're going to see whether it can be beneficial from an athletic point of view. And by this, I mean we're going to look and see whether or not it's protective against injury and helps with recovery. It's thought that because of the fluctuations of the hormones in the menstrual cycle, there are particular periods in the menstrual cycle, specifically around the menstrual period, that cause greater injury incidents. And it's thought that by using something like the pill that reduces these fluctuations in hormones, that there could be a protective benefit from the pill on muscle injury. However, in previous research, data has been conflicting. But I'm going to look at one of the most recent systematic reviews that was released in July of this year, and it looks at the effects of orally administered hormonal contraceptives on the musculoskeletal system of healthy premenopausal women. So let's look at the results. So it's there's no surprise that the pill does reduce hormonal fluctuations, and it doesn't do this completely because when you cycle off, <laughs> sorry, that kind of sounds like the steroid cycle, but when you take the placebo pills, there is a bit of a fluctuation in hormones, but for most of the time, hormone levels are stable. So let's look at the effects on muscle strength. So overall, there was no real benefit or disadvantage of the pill on muscle strength. However, what was shown is that there was a greater anabolic ability or anabolic effect in those using the pill, specifically in type 1 muscle fibers. So this could suggest that the pill could be beneficial from a bodybuilding standpoint. But this doesn't necessarily mean it's beneficial for athletes. And in fact, they detected negative effects on the regeneration of muscle strength between sets. And there was an increase in muscle soreness after exercise. And this was biochemically proven by the fact that creatine kinase, which is thought to cause muscle soreness, was increased in those taking the pill. However, this negative effect in terms of muscle strength regeneration wasn't found if the participant was on a pill with estradiol or estrogen levels less than 50 micrograms. So this tended to only be significant if the pill you're taking has estrogen or estradiol in it of more than 50 micrograms. Then they looked at the effects of the pill in terms of the texture and elasticity of muscle, tendons, and ligaments. And what they found is that there was a higher content of crosslinks and tendons of the individuals on the pill, and there was also a greater cross-sectional area of those taking the pill, especially in the ACL. So by these crosslinks, I mean there's probably a greater collagen content in these tendons, which tends to correlate with better strength of the tendon or ligament and a reduced risk of injury. And it was found that in these individuals taking the pill that their ACL was more stiff, which they conclude can be beneficial as well as not beneficial, because the stiffer you are, the decrease in range of motion you achieve, but at the same time, the more rigid a tendon is, the less likely it is to be injured. And if we look at the data on whether or not there are more injuries in individuals taking the contraceptive pill, the data is a bit mixed. The reason the data is mixed is because not every study that the systematic review looked at looked at injury prevalence. They just looked at whether or not the tendons were stiff or not stiff, and then concluded that if it was stiff, there's a higher chance of the tendon being stronger. But this isn't always the case. And in a previous systematic review looking at injury risk, the evidence was inconclusive. So we still have this data though that supports that there is high, higher collagen turnover in individuals using the pill. And furthermore, there's more satellite cell activation. And this activation of satellite cells tends to increase myoblasts within muscles or fibroblasts close to tendons and ligaments, which tends to either correlate with greater muscle hypertrophy or stronger 
tendons or ligaments. But as we just showed, the endpoints don't suggest that there is much of a benefit of the pill's effect to increase the thickness of a tendon. This doesn't necessarily correlate to lower incidence of injury. So overall, the data would suggest that estrogen does in fact cause hypertrophy of the muscle, so is beneficial from an anabolic standpoint, but might not be beneficial from the point of just general exercise and athletic ability. But we still don't have a lot of data on whether or not this increase in anabolic ability or decrease in regeneration of strength produces clinically significant results. But what is known is that there is longer lasting muscle soreness in those using the pill. And this itself could limit motivation to train the longer your muscles are sore, the more unlikely it is for you to go back and train using the same muscles. So this would suggest that there is a mixed bag when it comes to using the pill. Perhaps if your goals are more bodybuilding in nature, it could be beneficial, but then again you will suffer from more muscle soreness, and if it's purely from an athletic standpoint, you might be at a disadvantage because muscle regeneration is not as efficient. But as we showed, that only really occurs in preparations of the pill in which estradiol content is more than 50 micrograms. So let me know in the comments what you think about the systematic review and whether or not you agree personally with anecdotes from your own experience with the pill and training. And I'll see you in the next video.